going to uh, show you today how to use the font thing. Um, it can be a bit confusing at first until you um, see uh, what, a, what a great tool it is um, for temporarily installing fonts and for uh, viewing um, the various fonts on your computer. I have it open here and I'm going to uh, hit uh, new to create a new window. Now when you first open your font thing you it may look something like this and you'll notice that you do have uh, the minimize and the close boxes here and you can have several windows open on the uh, desktop within uh, the font thing and so I just wanted you to uh, note um, how uh, it works. Um, if you're making collections um, you can have two windows open and be dragging from one to another. I have a f window here minimized that I have prepared to use here in just a bit but I want to show you first um, how uh, to navigate to find um, your fonts that are in a different folder from your font folder. This is my font folder in my Windows uh, system, but I want to find my fonts that are um, elsewhere on my computer. So I'm going to hit Browse, and you'll notice it comes up with this little question mark, and you look at this and you think, what in the world am I supposed to do with this? If you hit the Refresh button, you'll see it comes up with uh, the folders on your your hard drive. Uh, please note you can grab these windows and move them around to help navigate it. If I'm going to find uh, my folder or my font, sometimes I'll, I'll make this really large and then after I get it um, to where it's found, I will uh, make it small again. And so I'm going to open that back up. Now it's um, often difficult to find those folders unless you n know really well how to navigate around your um, Windows folders because uh, when you hit on the C drive you you don't get anything really recognizable most often if you have um, your font your extra font folder in your my documents which I think most people would do um, I know in XP I have to go through documents and settings um, and I see here it's not uh, clickable uh, but you would go through documents settings find your username and then find my documents from there uh, you may have to go back to your font folder and look at the properties to see the tree on how to get there um, you might have to do a little bit of uh, learning before you um, can learn how to navigate. I'm working on Vista and if I go through uh, users and then I pick my username I can see uh, my documents here and then I have a fonts folder and you can see I have 8569 fonts on here and it will take um, a, quite a while for it to read these uh, you really want to click this include subfolder if you do have folders. I have sorted a few. I need to work on sorting um, some more uh, subfolders um, for my fonts. Um, I have Christmas, I have my favorites, and um, I have ones that I just want to try to see if I, I like them and want to move them into one of these folders. I have my Larrabee fonts which I've purchased. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this because I've already um, brought up and uh, read all of my fonts um, in this window. So I'm going to uh, next point out uh, when you first um, load a window, the default comes up as a sample and you can easily see uh, these are two piece fonts and you can click on each one of these to see what that font looks like. Um, looks like there's some fun doodles on that one. Okay, 
but I would be careful clicking on this multiple, if, especially if you have thousands of fonts like I do, uh, because it will allow you to compare um, several of these at the same time, and that's going to cause you to have to pause to wait for the, to read all those files again. How I like to view um, my fonts is in this tab called Characters. <coughs> wait, I'm going to go back. Let's go back to Sample. I want to show you this slider down here at the bottom you can make these larger or smaller um, by moving this slider. I, I like to look at mine large. Now we're going to go back to where it says character. This is, um, you can also uh, change how you view these by the sliders and what size you want them to be. But the default comes up with this values check and really this um, doesn't do us any good because this just counts the boxes. You'll see the first box is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and um, I, I see there's some uh, wingdings in this font also. Uh, I, if you check the characters box and remove the values box you'll see in the corner of each of uh, the boxes. Let me scroll down. A corresponding key on the keyboard. And so if I want to um, get this font, I'm going to hit A on the keyboard. Uh, this uh, really works well if you have wingdings. Which one? Here's the doodles. You go back to these little doodles in this font, and um, this shows you very well how you can um, see which keys you need to hit on your keyboard to get which doodles. Um, for instance, if I liked this flower here, I would see that I need to hit a B on the keyboard after I have this installed. And generally what I like to do <coughs> is um, to go down to about right here where I can see uh, what the capital letters look like and what the lowercase letters look like. And then I um, scroll through my fonts to pick one out because I like to be able to see what uh, sometimes um, for some fonts the capital letters and the lowercase letters are both capital letters. and. Uh, um, so that's important to note. And so that's why I like um, uh, viewing my fonts uh, this way. To install the fonts, um, you're going to simply right click and hit install. Now, um, I'm working in XP and I get this error message. It does not allow me to install. To install, um, it installs it permanently and I have found that I can um, simply go to uh, my fonts where I have them on my computer and find one I like, right click and hit install and that's going to permanently install that font. Uh, for some reason I cannot do it by, through the font thing. However, um, I'm not finding this uh, too much of a problem. Um, because you don't want to permanently install that many fonts uh, because that is going to uh, bog down your programs when you open them and so um, that's the whole purpose of having the font thing so that you can temporarily install your fonts rather than permanently install them. Um, if you right click and choose load um, you'll see that that does work and I did test it um, in in my PSE and it did work fine. Um, load will only keep it installed until you restart your computer. So even if I close the font thing, it's still going to um, be installed. But once I restart my computer, um, it's not going to be installed anymore. Of course, if I want to, I can choose um, to unload it. Uh, let me go to uh, 
this folder. I want to show you here, if you can see, it's kind of small on the screen, there are two different icons. I permanently installed uh, this font by Kimberly uh, Guesswine, and I temporarily installed this one. And you can see here that the uh, two icons are different, so that's how you can tell um, which ones are permanently installed and which ones are temporarily installed. And uh, that's about it. You see how easy and this is to uh, work with. It does work fine in XP. I'm just having a uh, little bit of troubles with it in Vista, and I'm brand new to Vista. I'm going to work towards seeing what that problem is, but as I said, um, uh, the purpose of this program is to temporarily install fonts anyway, and that seems to be working just fine in Vista. And so um, uh, I, oh, how cute. Look, it says I love you on that key. And you would hit um, uh, this tilde to get that on the keyboard. And so you can see how that, that is really handy to know which keys to hit and, and to be able to view all of the characters um, within that font. <coughs> These don't have any characters up here, so I'm thinking that you can't uh, get to those. Um, if you have any questions, please do ask in the forum, and I hope that this really uh, helps you understand how to use this great program. Um, and. Uh, I uh, hope to see you around the forums.